ASL Prime Week. Welcome to the winner's match of ASL Season 5 Prime League Legacy of the Void Beta Round of 16 Group B. Guys, if you didn't understand that incredibly long title, whatever, the winner of this best of three series will move on to the round of eight. Here in the top left hand corner, it is the blue Protoss player. It is Patience. And his opponent in the, the bottom right hand corner, the red Protoss player, it is Pure. This will be a PvP, lots more volatile. Actually, I, I've, he I've heard some people say it's more volatile in, Heart of in, in Legacy of the Void, and I've heard some people say it's more volatile in Heart of the Swarm, like both, both ways, it's, I'm not really sure. Definitely, there's a plethora and multitude of more openings that you can utilize in Legacy of the Void, but we'll see how that actually works out. The Adept push is just so darn good. Patience, right off the bat, feeling very confident. He is a Korean player. He's like, I think he's 130th place in WCS. Not phenomenal, but he he's shown him he's shown his stuff. He can play in WCS. He's played in Challenger. We'll see how that goes down. So it may come down to he's able to keep his cool in a PvP. Well, maybe Pure may blow it. We'll see, though, how, uh, how Pure really combats this match and does after scouting this. Because basically what he scouts here is what both players scout is Patience says, okay, cool, you haven't expanded yet. I just need to make sure you're not rushing me. There's the natural base. I love I love that pro movement right there for pure. And what I was going to say originally is that there's a big choice here of do you do like a huge gate push this early on, is that possible? Sometimes it is in Legacy of the Void. Or do you expand yourself? But both players just kind of do the uh, do the unspoken agreement of, cool, I scout you, don't worry, man, I'll take my natural base. Which, albeit, Patience only knows about now, so it's a little bit scary there for a couple seconds. Maybe a proxy won't be the case, though. Both players going adept, pure, not going for the Mothership Core. Qu actually, pure's Mothership Core, really what he did there um, Pure took his natural a little bit later in, in exchange for getting a quicker Mothership Core to defend against the early Protoss Adept pushes. You're trying to out mind game Patience right there, trying to block his pylon, but it won't be the case. We're seeing the first major deviation. Patience goes for the Forge, which I really like. You can do a lot of cool Adept pushes. You can do a lot of cool... You, you have extra minerals floating about as all the races, really, in early game. Maybe not so much as Zerg. But as Protoss, you have a lot of extra minerals laying around, and man, Patience takes that if they both A move, which that will not be the case. Pure Pure gets out of there, and it's kind of being confusing. But Patience is already on the other side of the map in the natural base of Pure. But like I was saying, you have a couple extra hundred minerals sometime, maybe like more like a hundred extra minerals. So you can push out an early forge and get some upgrades going incredibly early, and maybe even use that as your vision. For now, Patience will just try to deny as much mining as he can in the natural. Sadly, he doesn't one-shot probes, but he can keep probes from working. Pylon is not in the greatest place to defend at least the mineral line. Back into the main. Oh, it can actually pick up a sentry. It's really easy, and this is beautiful. Often when I have adepts when I'm playing when I'm playing PvP, which is where you have adepts fighting sentries, but when I do play that PvP, it's so easy to snipe the early sentries, which is really big. If you have a major pressure happening just after the Adept, if you have an Adept push, and you snipe that sentry, you, just, you almost negate all the Protoss defense possible, even with Photon Overcharge. Oh, Patience actually cancels that, um, that jump into the main because of the Stalker, and will barely get out because of that good move. Overall, Patience has killed six workers, while Pure has killed zero, but... I mean, there is the economic damage part, but neither of them committed to it that much. So really, this is amazing for Patience. Not so much for Pure, but at least he did get to get an eye on his opponent. But he's not going to see three gates going down, a Twilight Council, and a Robo. This is essentially, this is the point in PvP where Patience has said, and we've seen this from him before, kind of the Zerg mentality of, when am I going to pressure? When am I going to put on tech? And right now he says, I killed a couple workers. I didn't see much coming out of you. Yes, you have the ro yeah, or yes, you have an immortal, but 
you weren't pumping out units that quickly. I can macro up, take a third base, take three gates, add on a robo, and it's that Zerg mentality of when do I econom when do I economize? When do I make army? And when you're decisive about that, how a lot of the Korean players are, it's really gonna favor you. Not only that, but if Pure is too careful, too kind of held back into his natural, it could just give patience an almost game ending lead economically ah, economy wise. The moment patience is also up by 15 workers. We'll see how this all evens out, though. Shield upgrades coming down for patience. Robotics Bay plus two attack, and he's really going for a nice big push. Wants to deny that third base. More so, wants to know when the third base is taken. If he knows when the third base is taken, generally the Protoss army moves out with that probe, and he may be able to catch the army between the natural and the third base where there's no pylon help. Patience, though, he is... he. He's beautifully playing Protoss. I love what I'm seeing out of him, adding on more gates. And I like this. I really like this. I know I, I know I said that before, but I just I really like the mentality he's kind of going for here. Well his opponent, Pure, is honestly it's ta he's taking the backs he's taking the back foot as Protoss. He's taking the view of, ooh, I'm down, I need to get damage done, I'm gonna get Storm because Storm can change the tide of battle, and he's gonna get a nice scout here. Yes, that's great, but it's still the entire mentality we're seeing from here from Pure is not the best mentality to have. It's a very scared, I have to do damage. Instantly, we see Patience teleport home. He knows it's a two-second warp. Actually, kind of funnily enough, he teleports probes with that. But it's a two-second warp in from the warp prism, so he knows instantly he's got to be there to defend. Both players have observers relatively near each other, and they will spot that warp prism. For now, it's just Patience... He doesn't have to teleport to the third base. He should be able to deny it. Even with a warp in, the Adept should be able to deal with it. And he's, he's just doing so well right here. He He's anticipating a Disruptor falling out of that warp prism. At least it's keeping patience back at home. The Disruptor drops into the natural bases, into the third, into whatever. Just do so much damage if you're not pulling. It's not like a Widow Mine where, okay, you see it burrowing, blah, blah, blah. You, you can't kill it. It's not like you can stop it before it gets down. And it's a scary thing to deal with. For now, though, Patience will be getting out his own Disruptors. No Disruptors at the moment for Pure. But, again, guys, Pure is not taking his third base. For a good minute, the third base of Patience has been up. He's had more workers. And now Patience, he's really going to start being able to bank off that economy. And even though we see Pure moving out, I feel like Patience just has so much more. Even here. We'll see how it works out. I don't know what's up with the Double Guardian Shield, but we'll have to see how that pans out for him. Warp Prism still kind of posturing, looking for an angle. There are two Immortals with Pure's attack that could do a lot, but already Adepts are warped in. And the scary thing about Adepts is you can compare them to Roaches just as in they don't actually have to focus down the other Adepts here. They could have gone for Workers and been able to kill enough Workers before anything happened. And now actually the Army of Patience is a little bit split up. He realizes that. He does have two Disruptors, though. He's got to be careful. The third base, huge Storm Drops go down. Ten Workers are killed. By Pure, he does kill those 10 workers, 8, respectively, back at home in Pure's natural base. At the moment, they are only about 6 workers difference, but still the third base of Patience is up. He's, Pure's going to try to focus it down with the two Disruptors of Patience. Dang, the money shots are big, and if they go off, they will just decimate Adepts here. They won't, they won't one-shot Adepts, but as long as the Adepts are decently kind of taken down health-wise from fighting back and forth, they should almost kill them. For now, again, the Immortals so good at surviving assassination, assassination attempts or ganks, whatever you want to call it. Patience, or you can't quite dive in to try to kill him. There's the disruptors. In the oh, the army is so piled up right there that a disruptor does die. By the way, the purification nova does go down. And GG, patience wins game one. And welcome to well, or what? Well, welcome back to ASL StarCraft, guys. If you like the casting, if you want to know more, whatever, please check out ASLStarcraft.com. Here we are, the bottom left-hand corner, the blue Protoss player from Korea. It is Patience. And his opponent, top right-hand corner, the red Protoss player, currently down a game. It is pure. Thanks so much for everyone tuning in. If you're on Team Liquid, Please head over to Ding It, join our chat. We got some nice chatters tonight, and always thank you so much to you guys. Guys, though, the important thing right here for Pure is tournament life isn't on the line, but if he wants to even this out, have a chance at the round of eight, he should do so here. 
if he loses this, if either player loses this, they will go on to face whoever wins in the loser's match. For now, though, we'll see. Both players start off with a very, very early scout. Pylon gate and then scout. That is about as suspicious as you can get as Protoss. You're, just, you're doing something. Actually, we, we saw uh, we saw Patience. I keep wanting to say parting because his name's Big Boy, but we saw Patience actually do. Even He went Pylon, then went for the scout. So both players really, really suspicious of the other one doing some cheese. This time, though, neither player is opening up quite as economic. We'll see, though, Pure is being very careful. He's keeping his scout on this side of the map, unlike Patience, who's moved his probe back. Hmm. A little dicey situation. Patience knew there was a probe in his main. He didn't see it exit the natural. There he throws down the natural. I don't think the Pure realistically, or I don't think Pure can realistically, like, do a proxy or do some aggression to punish this, but he still is on one base. He still got the possibility, and with this one pro probe back there, he could very well do a pylon rush. We'll see. That won't be the case. He's just gonna hightail it out of there. Maybe get home and really just reap, reap some minerals for ire. We'll see how that works out. Adept coming out, and mothership for patience. Again, a little bit more delayed. He does take that economic route, and that maybe just he knows his opponent isn't gonna pressure him with the early scout. It's the clean, decisive. I scout you. I make decision, which I love about just really top-level Protoss players. Um, me being a low-level Protoss player, can't quite completely execute it. But now Patience will... I guess it doesn't matter. It, in, in theory, yes, you stop proxies, you stop proxy pylons, but he wants to get as soon as possible. He wants to get to the other side of the map to do damage. Top left, by the way, we're seeing a Stargate started by Pure. The Adept's not... I guess normally gonna scout it. We'll have to see how it goes down though. Zealot, Mothership Core, and Adept, I think will completely kill this. That's for out of Photon Overcharge, but Photon Overcharges are only 25 energy, so it's not too big enough. Hmm. I was, I was gonna say it's gonna be it's gonna be sucky if it scouts that. And Pure knows it. Pure's not gonna let it happen. There, he gets the kill. And it'll be Stargate. We saw Pure in the PvZ between Plumerant. Really like just one game. Let's try Sky Toss out. Which eh, may not work as well versus P in PvP. Maybe a Void Ray push, which I think is probably the most workable. But still, you could see Sky Toss. Generally, any good Protoss player, though, will just go into a little bit of Sky Toss himself. But good Archons just decimate the uh, Void Rays, which is normally what you see in Sky Toss PvP compositions. We'll see, though, how it plays out. I'm, I'm a little bit excited to see actually how this game is going to turn out. Normally, we see very rigid... I go Robo, you go Robo, we get some Adepts, you get some Adepts. We eventually get into Disruptors or Immortals. Whoever's slightly behind with Disruptors loses. We see a deadly dance between the two of both using Purification Novas, but this game totally going for different compositions. Both getting a Robo, but we'll have to see how the Stargate is utilized. I'm guessing it's going to be a Void Ray. Oracle would just be way too late, but it's been done for a while. Actually, there's the Oracle. I take that back. Oh! Oracle can't quite kill the uh, Photon Cannon, especially with two overcharges, and the Mothership Core could go into the main if it wanted to do something, but there's a cannon in the main, too, of Patience. He's playing this super safely, like, really super safely here. Adding on a couple more gates, just macroing up. And notice, like I was saying, when he knows he should be aggressive, when he knows he should macro, he literally has one Stalker out on the map. One Stalker. And his Mothership Core. So, just unit-wise, I love that. Actually, he's got a Sentry, too. Playing it really safe, but... It's still something, he knows when he macros up, he's doing a concise build, he's going to go for the drop, which, if there's a Void Ray or a Phoenix coming out of Pure, it'd be a nice counter. If he sees the Warp Prison, that'll be big, but for now it actually may go down. Uh, a little bit of weird Photon Overcharge, but the Stalkers could have pushed that Oracle farther into the main, into that Photon Overcharge, which I think would have been a fantastic move. But Pure just trying to keep eyes on his opponent. Parting, though, going, sorry, not parting. Patience, though, going for the Blink Stalker play. Pushing in, there's the Stalkers, and oh, the Oracle spots it. I mean, a, a Stasis Ward would be fantastic, which he does have enough energy for, but not when you're dead. The Pribe, or the Pribe, what am I talking about? The Probe, though, on the Zelnaga Tower, spots the army moving forward, and Pure, I think he has the defense. We'll see how good the Blink Stalkers are, though, because they could be relatively good. One Immortal, three Sentries, and three Adepts. More Stalkers being morphed in for Pure. You want to match the Stalker count. It's a little dicey if you don't go Stalker also in this in this composition. We'll see, though. 
only one immortal, but again, the warp prism range has been increased. You not only a blink, but you could blink back to a warp prism and effectively go into the warp prism, get out of it, and, and it's it's just crazy. You can do a lot of stuff now. And oh, there's the Phoenix of Pure. Like I was saying, if he can get a Phoenix or a Void Ray out, he can start to try to deny this warp prism harass. But there is the beautiful micro of parting. Gets stalkers on the other side, and now the entire army of Pure is out of position. I'd love to see a jab into the natural base. We're not going to see that for now, though. I'd say this is not quite the best idea for Patience. Maybe he assumed his opponent assumes that he it's the double mind game. He assumes his opponent is going to move into the natural base. But then again, Patience also has Blink and can easily get out of there. It's the double mind game where you're like, you think I'm pulling your army back to hit your natural, but I'm not. And then Pure is like, I'm just pulling my army back to defend. Like, it just doesn't matter. Blink can get dicey. It can get really out of control quickly. Um, getting into your main sniping key tech paths. For now, though, I think Pure... He... <laughs> warping a whole bunch of adepts and push out. He can force out this one more mortal, but once the disruptors are out for patience here, I don't know as much he can do. And we see double Twilight Council for Pure. That is a thing you can do now, I guess. I guess shields and blink. Maybe it was an accident. I don't know. Guys, we'll have to see. Stalker's really... Really holding pure back. Both players going for a third base. The third base, or the third nexus of Patience is down a lot quicker. But now, actually, he's pulled the army out of position. And he's going to go for a couple kills here. He will get these pylons, which is key. As I was saying, there are now even more youthful, even more utilities. And there's enough force field to force field off that ramp. But it doesn't matter. Forces the teleport home. But that's only 50 energy out of 200. You got four, four, you got four teleport homes. You can do a teleport home, multiple foot and overcharges. Oh, that warp prism of Patience. Dicey situation right there. But the Mothership Core is even more of a utility. The Pylon even more of a utility than you could use before. And it's not like, it's not something where you're afraid to use it. Like, oh, what if I use it and it just doesn't work out? You you can use it when you have to, and then you have a little extra. Patience, though, finally, uh, actually, he's keeping his Disruptors at home. Maybe going for a Disruptor drop. But with his Stalkers, the beautiful thing about Blink Stalkers is he just kept his opponent on the back foot the entire time, allowing him to get up to the scary tech army of protests that can happen. And, oh, maybe we'll get the Pylon in Stargate. Nah, it won't. But I think it was scouted right there. Stalkers are there for Stalkers and two Pylons. Should be relatively quick Photon Overcharges, and those push it back. From what it looked like, it would take... Two, three, four. It took about eight shots from a foot and overcharge to kill a warp prism, but you know what we'll have to see. Two hundred health on that warp prism overall, one hundred shields, one hundred health. Observer of patience is with it, also I find it a little funny. For now though, patience finally moving out. Like I was saying, oh, I love the hallucinated oracle. Even though they're slower than Phoenixes, sometimes it's just so clever. Oh, it, it forces out three force uh, foot and overcharges and he it was like Oracles kill workers so quickly you almost have to do that. You can't take the time to say, oh, it took a little damage. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do the next photon overcharge. But players don't truly know the exact damage photon overcharge. Or it's not quite ingrained in you of oh that's a hallucinate hallucination and oh man, pure he heads back home. The stalkers see it and they're like, Whoa. Uh we we uh, we weren't trained for this. They will pull back, realizing Blink wasn't quite there. And is the double Twilight Council utilized? It's not. Ah, oh, man, Pure, what are you doing? What are you doing? But this is the final defense. The problem is, Pure being on the defensive, the Disruptors have all the time in the world to do the damage they want to. Yes, there's three Immortals. See how good there are. Oh! Disruptors doing so much damage, bringing all the Immortals down so low in health. Yes, they have the barrier, but that only soaks up 300 damage for two seconds after that. Not much there. The Immortals so low in health, the Disruptors are still alive in the back. Blinks are good, but doesn't need them. Guardian Shields up. Patience, guys! The Korean Protoss player, Patience, representing Dead Pixels, moves on to the round of eight, going 2-0. to zero. Thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe to support the ASL by hitting the button now.